welcome to a sofa sessions on the hardest sofa I've ever sat on. It's pretty odd, although I did notice when I got there, Johnny, you've got a butt cushion. I did. Like you've got piles or something. I think it's pink as well. <laughs> so we are here at the Beer Merchants Tap, a new location for the sofa sessions. Last time we were here, it was just a building site. And yeah, we did a load of that bit. Uh, oh yeah, that was a good day. In, in a dusty, dusty Great day. environment. That basil landing. Uh, fuck, that was good. Yeah, spontan pesto was amazing. Uh, but this time we're going to the opposite end of the craft beer spectrum. Uh, we have got our hands on what is commonly referred to as hype juice. Um, or, for the kids, this is or, for like the players. Or also currency in oh. the world of trading. Oh yeah. So you have Cantillon, which is like the rare stuff that you send to the States, and then you have the hype juice, the other side of the currency, which you send to Europe, and that's this what we have here. Pure dark web acquisitions. Pure dark web. Well, no, I, I got this through the McKellar web shop. It's all legit. Yeah, what everyone, everyone knows what's <laughs> going on here. No county on was harmed in the filming of this. Um, but it was a chance to get three beers from one of the breweries that is most hyped, most talked about by the, the tiniest of the bubbles. Not just the bubble, but the internet bubble and the Reddit the bubble and the trader bubble. bubble, the inner bubble. It's like if you're in a jacuzzi hot tub and there's lots of bubbles, and then he's, you might have a little fart a bubble. So what we have here is beer from the Vale, from Richmond, uh, Virginia. Uh, the, the guy that founded it is really interesting. I think he spent a lot of time in Belgium. I think he worked at Cantillon for a little while, interestingly enough. Um, but has gone on to make some of the juiciest, most delicious beer that I've tried at beer festivals. He's a juice bomber. He's a juice bomber. And lots of other exciting things, like lots of fruited ghosts, that kind of stuff. By all accounts, a very, very talented brewer. He's a well-rounded individual. Yeah. We've got three IPAs from this brewery that is mostly hyped for its IPAs. I think we've got mostly the core IPA, yeah. then we've got a special that I've never heard of, and then we've got a beer that is dedicated to Paul from Cloudwater. It's a love note. It's a love to note to Paul. Who is a lovely uh, man. And what a lovely beard. They, it, I mean, they've nailed the beard. They've made his mouth a little bit squiff. So we're going to start with red Mayata. They have a red and a white. Sounds like Detail a medical condition account. in your eyeball. I've got red Mayata I've got red on. Mayata in my left eyeball. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, mate. All of these, I expect, are going to be New England hazy juice bombs. Uh, I'm hoping made with serious quality and precision. I can smell it from here. It's potent, eh? That takes me straight back to New England. Wow. It's got less of the, like, treehouse is very dialed in fruitiness like Julius. This yeah. one's got that slight dankness that I think a lot of Trillium beers have. Dank, definitely dank. dank. Some savouriness. Super mega crazy like. That's kind of mad. I don't know it what It reminds me of the Brute IPA we had a little bit. That finit, there's no bitterness. No bitterness in None. There. None. But Not a like, noggin. Bit farmyardy though still, which is... Yeah. Um, yeah, still dank. Still some... Um, but gone straight away. Not marijuana. No, but it's like not. They were sweet Mary Jane. Oniony, garlicky, yeah. savoury, which is nice. It's a nice balance actually, oh, yeah. I think. It's got a... a I mean, it's not sour, it's not at all acidic, but it's got that, I guess, really clean, like, I feel like maybe the, he, he pushed the pH of the brew as low as he could. It's, it's really clean, it's really light and pointy, jaggedy, I would say. Like a, like a throwing star from a ninja. It's not the juice bomb I was expecting, it is a stick in the throat. It's not a flabby, flabby funsy. Brad likes it. He did a dolphin no, dolphin born noise and then... It's gone. So now we're going for special combo number three. Um, and it's got a pizza on it's the got can. A pizza on it. Like a fairly badly rendered pizza. It's pepperoni pizza. It's like top pizza. Special number three. I, I hope that this goes well with pizza. I, I haven't met a beer that doesn't go well with pizza. That's the next video. So, so this, is, this is stepping it up. This is stepping it up. So this is nine? Nine percent alcohol. Oh my days. It's like there's, there's, uh, there's not as much going on on the nose. You see on that I'm getting nail polish. I don't want that in an IPA. So, I mean, it's come from Denmark? Is that how you've ordered it? Where's yeah, it come so from? it's come by the McKellar web shop. These beers are just over a month old. Uh, no, just under two months old at the point. And you so want to drink this as fresh as possible. Yeah, I mean, most most of the breweries in America put six weeks on this, so this is just beyond the six-week kind of. So the, the nail polish might be where we're pushing the 
you know, the nail polish is always there. Oh, you think? Yeah, right. it may have been hidden, a, a slight but if there's nail polish on the aroma, it's always been there. That, that's a, a slightly stressed yeast. That's an ester. I, I do like the mouthfeel though. I think it's, it's, it's quite nice and sort of creamy. It is creamy and smooth. Hmm. Um, just say, yeah, that aroma is dominated by stuff that's gone on with the yeast that shouldn't have. Uh, I don't think that's that's a freshness thing. I don't think it's a, a bad storage thing. I don't think it's cooked. I just think that the yeast has been it's been put through hell to get to nine. Bit too much stress. So I'm not quite sure why this beer has come about. Uh, <laughs> it's a double dry hop, cheeky triple India pale ale. I mean, I've met Paul. Yeah. He is, if anyone is a cheeky dry hops uh, individual, mm. it's probably Paul. He's well hopped by now and he can be cheeky. It's, it's, it's tangy, juicy, like juicy fruit, like borderline too much. Yeah. Uh, acidic fruit from a hop. It's nice, it's a nice smell. Yeah, that's the best of the lot, I think, for me. It tastes pretty well balanced, doesn't it? I mean... 11%. That's unbelievable, that's 11%. <laughs> I thought it was maybe 7 I thought that might blow your mind. Uh, that, that is juicy and smooth and syrupy. There's a little bit of bitterness, a tiny bit of dankness. It just stops it being too much. That is a beautiful it's, beer. It's balanced. It's balanced. I mean, it's unbelievable, that's 11%. Yeah. Um, is it cheeky? I think it probably it's is. It's soupy. It's where someone slaps you in the face and laughs, and you walk away, and then you're like, actually, that hurt a bit. Like the tango advert from the late 90s. Is that... Yeah, you've been tangoed with that. Until it got banned. Did it get banned? Why yeah. did it get banned? They deafened somebody. What? On the, well, kids on the school ground were slapping each other in the ears, and uh, kids got deafened. I recently bought a bottle of tango. And it's got a great tagline on it that says six of your five tangos a day, which I thought was, was actually great because it's like five of it's you know one of your five a day, but it was six of your five tangos a day. Loved it. <laughs> Thanks. So it's encouraging people to have less tango while also encouraging yeah, people like, to have more tango. This has got too much tango in it. <laughs> It's got six of your five a day, so don't drink that much of it. I feel like, given, uh, the, given the, the, the core audience of Tango, that's a real thinker. Did Wait. you know Fanta was made in Nazi Germany by the Coca-Cola company? Because they wanted to sell product during the war. True fact, wiki it. Wiki it! So back to the veil. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what a great name as well, the veil. It's the very veil. evocative, and, and the, I think there is a kind of mystery, yeah, behind around. the veil. Yeah, it's a bit, a little bit like the yellow brick road. You know, when you get to the end of the yellow brick road, and you meet the the guy in the Emerald City, yeah, who's behind the veil, mm. and he's like running the show. Mm. I quite like that bit as a vision. It's an interesting one. And maybe that's what it's about. Maybe if you met the guy behind the veil... He's a little old man. But that, that Paul and uh, Mayata, is, they're, they're good, good Mayata. fucking beers. Mayata. Are they worth losing the county on over? No, just, just let somebody that wants a Lambic in the UK drink it. Don't trade it away. Um, but I realise my name is Mud in trade uh, forums, so anyone that that was for won't listen. So it's fine. I stay away from all of this dark web activity. It's for the best. I just love... I mean it for the love, Johnny, not for the trade. And the three bit. Love, not trade. There's, there's a t-shirt in there. Well guys, thank you for joining us. Please do let us know if you have anything to add to this. Hype, or no hype, or middle hype. Uh, and we will see you guys soon uh, for another Sophie Sessions. Cheers. Cheers.